What's up, good people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another live. Welcome back to another video. Not sure if it's morning, afternoon, or, or evening where you're at and when you're watching this particular video, but welcome. Thank you, thank you for stopping by and tapping in for a few minutes. Before we get started, I want you guys to do two important things for me. The very first thing I need you to do is smash that like button. As soon as you come into the live, as soon as you click on the video, and if you're watching it in video format, hit the thumbs up button for me. Please, please hit the thumbs up button for me. It's extremely important because YouTube uses that thumbs up that you guys hit as a sign that it's good content and they'll spread it out to more people so we can grow this community of ours and we can help more people get to their financial freedom. So please hit that thumbs up for me. The second thing I want you to do is consider getting up to 12 free stocks from Weeble. Weeble is gonna give you up to 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put any amount of money in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock, go get that free money. I also want you guys to send me a DM on Instagram at RichardFain28 and I'm gonna send you a free Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade. All you gotta do, like I said, is send me a DM on Instagram at RichardFain28. Let me know you've opened the Weeble account, you funded it, and I'm gonna go ahead and send you that free Weeble tutorial video so you can get going to building your wealth immediately. The Fed just said, they want all Americans to be rich. The Fed's primary goal is to create price stability in our economy. The way they do that is by controlling the money supply. The Fed control the money supply in large part by using short-term interest rates. So when the Fed want to increase the money supply to our economy, they will decrease short-term interest rates. When the Fed wants to not add money to the money supply, they want to take money out of the economy, what do they do? They increase short-term interest rates. And that's the cycle that we're currently in right now with the Fed and short-term interest rates. We're in a cycle where they want to actually decrease the money supply. So how does interest rates play into that? Companies and individuals like you and I, we borrow money when it's cheap. So when interest rates are low, we have access to more money because we can also go out and borrow money. I can go to the bank, I can say, bank, I got good credit, I got proof of income where I can repay you, I wanna borrow some money. And then I can take that money and buy things to make other people wealthy, or I can take that money and actually buy assets. I can actually buy a piece of real estate where I can put a tenant in it and get income, and then hold that real estate for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and then also what I can do is get appreciation, capital appreciation. How does companies use cheap money to grow? Well, what they do is they'll borrow this cheap money, right? Let's say at 2%, let's say at 3%, and then they'll take that cheap money and they'll invest it into their company, into their growth. They can hire people, they can do R&D for new products and services, right? They can invest that money as well, right? And let's say they get an 8% return, 
on money that they borrowed at 3%. Net net to that company, they just made a 5% profit, right? And that profit comes in the form of growth. So companies and consumers like you and I, when interest rates are low, the money supply is turned on. But when we get out of control and we start spending too much, right? We start buying all this stuff that we really don't need. When companies get too greedy, right? And then inflation goes up. Why? Because we don't have enough supply to meet the demand. So when consumers and companies get greedy, right? And prices go up too high, then the Fed has to step in and turn off the money supply. And they do that by increasing short-term interest rates. And that's what they've been doing, guys, over the last 20 months, right? We had so much excess money in our economy that prices of our goods and services skyrocketed because we had all of this demand because of that surplus money, all this demand, but we didn't have enough supply to meet that demand. And that is unhealthy for our economy. Remember what I said, the Fed's number one priority is price stability because they want everybody living in America to be able to afford the basic things that they need to live. And right now, everybody can't. So how does the Fed put us in a position to be rich? Stick close to this. Let me walk you through what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here. So right now, interest rates are high. So that tells us assets are trading at a discount. Assets like paper assets in the stock market is trading at a discount. So if historically, I know the stock market over a 90 year period will give me an average of a seven to 10% rate of return on my money, right? If I can buy these paper assets at a discount now and be patient and hold them, right? I gotta hold them. I may have to hold them for three years. I may have to hold them for five years, right? But if I'm patient and I'm willing to hold them, when they start trading again at a premium, right? I'm buying them at a discount today. Why? Because the Fed has done what? Increased short-term interest rates. So therefore, companies can't borrow money. So companies are not as profitable. When they're not as profitable, their stock price comes down. I will buy these companies when they're not profitable and their stock price comes down. So when the Fed turns around and does what? Turn the money supply back on, which they will because history says they have to, they will turn the money supply back on. And all turning the money supply back on means is, is they're gonna decrease short-term interest rates and make it easier for these companies that I've been buying these shares at a discount in it's going to make it easier for those companies to borrow money again and start growing. And when those companies start borrowing that money and investing in employees, investing in R&D, right? Investing in expansion and they start growing again and become profitable again. That investment I made in that company three years ago when they were trading at a discount, now that they're trading at a premium because they're profitable and they're making all this money. Guess what happens to my investment? It goes to the moon too. That's how the Fed allows us to make money and get wealthy and get rich if we know what we're doing, right? This is the perfect time right now, guys. The Fed is gonna be meeting tomorrow, which is September 19th, and they're gonna be meeting September 20th. And there's wide speculation that the Fed may not increase short-term interest rates by 25 basis points in their meeting tomorrow and Thursday, Tuesday and Wednesday. My apologies on that. Got my dates a little mixed up there, but they're gonna be meeting Tuesday and Wednesday. 
And, they'll, and, and, and like I said, most economists, big time investors, don't believe the Fed will increase interest rates tomorrow or Wednesday. Now, I don't know if I agree with that because remember last week we got the CPI inflation report for August and it was lackluster. I mean, it wasn't extremely bad, but it wasn't extremely good, right? When we look at headline inflation, when we look at core inflation, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It wasn't like inflation showed some strong signs of really, really aggressively coming down. It, 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 it doesn't, right? If we look at headline inflation from the August CPI inflation report, we actually missed on headline, right? I believe headline came in at 3.7, but expectations was 3.6. So we missed. When we look at core, we actually did okay on core. We came in even. Core was expected to come in at 4.3, it came in at 4.3. So, so, so it wasn't an amazing piece of data that the Fed could look at and say, oh, inflation is coming down rapidly. Let's pause. We're not going to increase short-term interest rates in our September meeting. I don't think it was that type of data. I think it, the data was sort of inconclusive, right? The Fed could certainly look at it and say, eh, we ain't making the progress we need. Let's bump 25 basis points in our September meeting. But your economists and all these smart people out there are saying that they'll pause and then they will resume rate hikes in their November meeting. I believe it's the October 31st, November 1st meeting. I call it the November meeting of this year. So we will see. We will see. But here's what I want you guys to start thinking about and starting to position yourself. And again, I've been telling you guys this, I've been telling you guys this since January of 2023. I've been saying, guys, take your money, start buying the S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. Start buying that consistently. Now, had you listened to me, you'd be up. 15% year to date on that S&P 500 ETF VOO. You'd be up right now. So I'm telling you again, consider this. And again, I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, uh, I'm just telling you, consider this. Before the Fed turns back on the money supply, and they are going to be turning it on, guys. They have to. Before the Fed turns on the money supply, get yourself in a position where you're ready to build your wealth. Get rich. Increase your net worth. They're going to be turning it back on. Right now, it's turned off. And the reason it's turned off, I've already explained that to you. They turned it off because people got greedy. Corporations got greedy right? Consumers got greedy. Start buying up all kinds of stuff that they didn't need. And we couldn't keep up with demand. Supply couldn't keep up with demand. And when that happens, inflation increases. Inflation got all the way to 9%, guys, when it should be 2%. That's when the Fed does what? They turn off the money supply. They increase short-term interest rates. They're going to be turning the money supply back on, though, guys. And I think they're going to be turning it on in 2024. Specifically, in my opinion, the first quarter or second quarter in 2024, they're going to start reducing short-term interest rates and start slowly turning the money supply back on. And it's going to start reducing interest rates to borrow money. And when interest rates to borrow money get low enough, guess what's going to happen? People are going to start borrowing it. 
companies are going to start borrowing it. And that's the Fed's way of adding or, or providing more money supply to our economy. But the only reason I care about that is because once they do that, I believe the stock market will rally. That will be the beginning of the new bull market. And if you're invested, like I've been asking you guys to consider, I've been asking you to open the Weeble account, put some money in it, start buying the S&P 500 ETF VOO from Vanguard, start buying the total stock market ETF VTI from Vanguard, start buying Vanguard Information Technology VGT, which is a tech ETF. I've been asking you guys to consider these things, right? I've also told you what I'm gonna be buying as it relates to ETFs and individual stocks. Guys, this is how the 1% get wealthy because they know these little things about our economy, about our financial system, about the Federal Reserve. They know these things. They know when the money supply is turned on and when the money supply is turned off. If you're someone that's trying to build wealth, this is a great opportunity while the money supply is turned off, while interest rates are high. This is the time where you double down and build wealth. Because once the money supply is turned back on and these companies get back on their feet and start borrowing money and start cranking out profits, their stock prices are going to go back to the moon. Right? I'm not saying you can't, you know, dollar cost average in and, and continue. Do, no, do both. I do both. I dollar cost average in in good and bad times. But I also put myself in a position where I understand when the money supply is turned off, that's an opportunity to build wealth. That's what the Fed has given all of us. They've given all of us the ability to build wealth right now if we take action. But if we sit around, and twiddle our thumbs and act like, oh, I don't know everything about the stock market. How can I invest in an ETF? I need to know every company and everything about it. Uh, you don't need to know all of that. All you need to know is over the last 90 years, it's delivered between a 7 to 10% rate of return on your money. Rule of 72 says, I will double my money every seven years if I can get at least a 10% rate of return. Guys, what are we waiting on here? What are we doing here? If you want to build wealth and become wealthy, whatever wealth means to you. See, that's another thing. We think wealth means some magical number that some other dude created or some other woman created. No, wealth is whatever I say wealth is. I don't care what nobody say on the internet. I don't care what my neighbors say. I don't care what my family says. Wealth is whatever I define it as that's why I say wealth guys wealth is whatever I define it as and I'm telling you wealth to me is financial freedom the ability to be able to do whatever I want whenever I want and not have to worry about money in order to pay for it that's wealth wealth equals freedom wealth is not some magical digit or dollar amount. Wealth means freedom. I can get up in the morning and do exactly what I want to do when I want to do it because my lifestyle that I'm living is paid for by my assets. That's wealth. Oh, you ain't wealthy because you, you don't got a Lambo. You ain't wealthy because you don't got a PJ. Oh, you ain't wealthy because you ain't walk across the stage with Lil Wayne. Oh, you ain't wealthy because you ain't got a closet full of Birkin bags. Oh, you ain't wealthy because you don't own multiple Rolex. See, that's the trap. The 1% got y'all trapped in right there. See, that's why the 1% stay rich and 99% of us stay broke right there. We got a delusional idea of what wealth is. Wealth is whatever you define it as, guys, period. That's wealth. So if, if, if me having an extra $3,000 a month 
to, to, so I can go out and do the things that I want to do that make me feel good and, and give me purpose and passion in my life, that's wealth, guys. If I got an asset producing $3,000 a month for me and I ain't got to work no more and trade time for money and I ain't got to be under the man's thumb, that's wealth, right? Wealth is any amount of money I can receive without me doing any work for and I can live my lifestyle and don't have to worry about money. That's wealth. And right now I'm telling you, the Fed has put you in a position, has put all of us in a position to be a wealth, guys. Whether you believe it or not, they have. I've explained to you how the money supply works. When the money supply is turned on, companies thrive. And when companies thrive in our economy, when they're profitable, they become more valuable. And when they become more valuable, if I've put my money into their company and now I'm a shareholder, guess what? I share in that value. I share in those profits because my investment also goes up because I am a owner of that company. Albeit a small owner, I'm still an owner. And owners share in value add. They share in dividends if that company pays dividends. But more importantly, I can sell my position in that company and make a bunch of money, right? I buy Tesla at $105 a share, what, less than a year ago? I could have bought Tesla at $105 a share. Fast forward a year later, it was trading at $290 a share. Come on guys, you ain't got to be no uh, PhD in mathematics to figure that one out. Uh -uh. I was not very good in math, but I can figure that one out. I bought at 105, I sold at 290, Hmm, was that a good investment? I think it was. Now, that's an extreme example. It was. But think about Apple. Think about all the other great companies out there over the last 12 months you could have bought. Think about if you to start buying companies when the Fed originally started turning off the money supply, which was probably first quarter 2022. Think about it. Go back and do your homework. Go do some research. Look at when the Fed started turning off the money supply back in, I want to say, February, March of 2022. And you look at these companies that you could have bought. Look at the ETS. You could have bought the S&P 500. Probably in that, I don't know, 300 325 range, maybe a little less than that, maybe a little more than that. Guess what? It's trading above $100 per share above what it was trading last year, this, last year, about a year ago, year 15 months ago. Yeah, absolutely. That it, you, you could have, but see people, we get too caught up in trying to have too much knowledge, but we have no, we take no action. I've already told you guys, 80% uh, 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 of building wealth is about taking action. It's not about knowledge. It's not about the information. It's about taking action, right? And what I'm telling you is when the Fed starts turning back on the money supply, a.k.a. reducing short-term interest rates, which they will, I don't care what these people on TV tell you. I don't care what these people on YouTube tell you. They are going to do that. They're going to do it. Now, whether it's 24 or 25, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm giving you my opinion that it's going to be first or second quarter 2024. But at some point, they're going to turn that money supply back on. And when they do, a.k.a. decrease short-term interest rate, all hells go break loose in the stock market. And I'm going to be so well positioned that I'm going to double my money. Just telling you. And then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make another YouTube video and walk you guys through how I doubled my money. And all along, I've been telling you guys, consider paper assets. Consider it. 
Now, I'm not your financial advisor, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do. What I'm telling you is, is just go look at history. Don't believe me. I'm just a guy on YouTube, right? I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I'm just a guy who done this for 25 years, guys. And, and it built my wealth, right? I'm at freedom. Do what I want to do when I want to do it. Buy what I want to buy when I want to buy it. And guess what? Got enough assets to back it all up. That's all. No, I'm no expert. I'm not one of these guys with a lot of fancy digits or, or, or fancy letters or whatever you want to call it. I ain't got them. I ain't got no Series 7. I ain't got no Series 6. I ain't got a 63. I ain't got a CFP. Most of these people who got all that crap, guess what? I've done better than them financially. And I'm not knocking those people. What I'm trying to get you to understand is you don't have to have all of that to build wealth. What you do have to have is a desire to take action. And you got to find something that's more important than your fear. A lot of people don't have anything that they can wrap their mind around that means more to them than their fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is, 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 is more present in their mind than their financial freedom. For those people, they're not gonna be a wealth. They're gonna sit around, twiddle their thumbs, and then in five years, they're gonna say, you know something? I remember watching that guy on YouTube, and that guy said, and I should have listened. Maybe you should have, maybe you shouldn't have. That's on you, you gotta make that decision. I'm just telling you what I'm gonna be doing, and I'm telling you what the proven pattern for success is because I done been there before. I done been there. I done been in worse financial shapes than we're in right now. The 2008 downturn was worse. And the same thing I'm telling you, I did in the 2008 downturn, right? The only difference is, is real estate was cheap then too. Right now, real estate's not cheap. That's really the only, only, only difference to me. Stocks are just as cheap. Now, stocks are going to continue to go up, in my opinion. Real estate right now is probably not, for me at least, the best place to try to multiply my money because prices are too high, right? And you might say, well, okay, if, if the Fed uh, controlling the money supply and they've, they've turned off the money supply by increasing short-term interest rates, then why are home prices so high? Well, I, they, they're high because we got low inventory. And, and, and like I told you guys in several videos ago, baby boomers, 65 million baby boomers, these people got money. They ain't like most of y'all. Well, we sitting around here ain't got no money in retirement savings. I ain't got a thousand dollars in your in your savings account. No emergency fund, credit card debt. These baby boomers, man, these, this is from a, a different generation. These people got wealth, right? And they're moving to, to a warmer climate to get out of the Northeast, the Northwest, the Midwest, met West. And they're trying to get to Florida, get to Arizona, get to Nevada, places where you can get sunshine all year round. And they're buying properties. They don't care, care anything about that. They're buying properties. You got international buyers coming into the marketplace, buying properties. They're buying property because they understand how real estate works. If I can buy a piece of real estate in the right location, it doesn't matter what I pay for it right now. It's going to be worth more tomorrow. That's the way it works, especially if it's in a desirable location. See, international buyers understand that. Hedge funds, right? Big, big institutional investors like BlackRock. They're buying up real estate, residential real estate. Why is BlackRock doing that when prices are so high? Because they understand when you buy real estate in a desirable location, you can put you a tenant in it. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get rental income commensurate to at least covering your expenses, especially if you don't have to take out debt for it. BlackRock ain't going to get no loan. BlackRock playing cash. And guess what? They're putting tenants in those properties. And guess what? They're getting positive cash flow because they don't have no debt associated with it. International buyers, they ain't getting no loans. These people coming in here with cash, man. Paying cash, all cash. And guess what they're turning around and doing? Put tenants in the property 
and just holding it. They're buying all this beachfront property in California and Florida. Listen, man, I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all think people ain't got money in this, in this country or in this world. You better stop looking at all, I'm telling you guys, you better stop looking at the news and listen to all these people on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok telling you nobody ain't got no money. No, you ain't got no money, but there are plenty of people out there got money. Trust me, there's plenty of people got money. There's plenty of people right now in this economy we're in making millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars every year in this economy we're in right now. And what makes them any different than you? They figured out a problem to solve and they came up with a solution and they're getting rich. Most of us want to sit around and complain. Oh, well, the government, uh, this person, that person, this company won't pay me enough. That per That's all we want to sit around here in the United States and do is complain all the time. Wow, guess what's happening? <laughs> People, international buyers are coming in here buying all of the private real estate. They're buying it up. Trust me, they're buying it. Companies like BlackRock buying up all the prime real estate, right? See, when you got companies like um, Redfin and some of these other online, I call them real estate, companies, whatever they do, you know, show real estate, buy, sell, agents, get revenue from agents that list. Companies like that tried to buy real estate, but they didn't know what they were doing. They know it. Redfin didn't know what they were doing. Redfin, a brand new company, really, right? It ain't really even. But when you got a company like BlackRock with unlimited resources, see, they, they have the resources to wait out any downturn in the market because they know eventually that beachfront property or that property in that really good neighborhood, eventually when the economy turns around and the Fed turns back on the money supply, AKA reducing short-term interest rates, all of the properties BlackRock bought, guess what? They go make a lot of capital appreciation because what's gonna happen is when the Fed turns back on the money supply, interest rates come down you're gonna have a demand that shoots up, right? The demand is gonna go through the roof for real estate, right? And when the demand goes through the roof for real estate, we're not gonna have enough supply to meet that demand. Why? Because we don't have enough supply right now and, and, and national home builders are not gonna add any supply, not any adequate supply. And the reason they're not adding adequate supply is because they need Customers, they need middle class income earners to be able to buy these cookie cutter boxes that they're building. Because y'all know national home builders, they don't do custom. They do cookie cutter floor plans and they build them in the thousands and the hundreds. That's what they do. And they sell them to middle class, upper middle class income wage earners. And right now, with rates so high, 7.5% for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, a lot of those middle class and upper middle class income wage earners can't afford it. But when the Fed turns back on that money supply and them rates come down and that money supply is turned on, all of those people with that pent-up desire to have a piece of the American pie, which is that house with a white picket fence, they're going to start running to their local banks and their local lenders and their credit unions applying for these loans and, and, and folks like BlackRock, international buyers, maybe some baby boomers who, who invested for income. They're going to put those properties up on the market and make a boatload of money. Not only did they make the cash flow from the rental income while they held the property, but now they're gonna make capital appreciation on the sale. But see, a lot of y'all don't get that. Y'all think, oh, what are, you what are you talking about? No, that's what's happened. That's how this country works, guys. That's why 1% owns 99% of the wealth. Because see, they know these things. But we sit around here and get, get bogged down in what we heard somebody, oh, they said that the economy is going to be the worst disaster since this here, man. Y'all got to understand something. 
When do you think most millionaires are made? When do you think most millionaires really make their millions? They make them in down economies, guys, in volatile economies. Most people don't make their wealth when everything is perfect. That is not when they make their wealth. They make their wealth when things are not perfect. When they can exploit some part of our economy to the point where they can create a need. They can solve a problem. They exploit that. A part of what we do here in this country is we exploit each other. We just do. Right? That's a part of our way of life here. And I'm not knocking that. I'm just telling you when you know that. You learn from it, you use it to your advantage, and you build wealth and get rich. I'm just telling you, the money supply is going to be turned back on here real soon. You better be ready. Because if you're not, you're just going to make somebody else wealthy. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. A lot of us ain't going to do nothing. We're going to sit here and be scared to death. Because we heard some guy on TV say, whoa, it's the worst time to buy investments. Keep it in your savings account. We heard some guy say that, and that's what we're going to hang our hat on, right? But here's what's going to happen. They're going to turn the money supply back on. And then all of a sudden, some guy going to come on TV and say, this is the perfect time to buy. Buy, buy, buy. And guess what that is? That's just the 1% manipulating you through media so that they can sell and make their profits. See, they want you to buy when you should be selling. And they want you to sell when you should be buying, right? That's how they manipulate us. But, but a lot of us, 99% of us don't understand that. We don't understand that manipulation technique. Let me tell you one more time. They're gonna put propaganda out in the media that says the worst of the worst, the, the, get out, put, keep your money at home in your coffee can in the back of your, your, your cabinet, keep it under your mattress, go buy gold, Go buy physical silver, right? That, that's what they're going to tell you. And the reason they're telling you that is because when assets are trading at a discount, that's when they buy. But they want you to sell when, when assets are trading at a discount. They want you to sell at a loss, not make any profits. And then they're going to gobble it all up. And then when it's time for them to sell, guess what they're going to do? They're going to come right back on TV, right back on social media, right back on radio. And they're going to say, oh, guys, correction. This is the best time in history to buy. If you're not buying right now, you are missing a great opportunity. And that's them manipulating you to buy so that they can sell. See, this is how they manipulate us. And this is why they control 99% of the wealth. And we control, most of us control 1% 1, 1 of the wealth. They control 99, we control 1. So 1% 1 of the population controls 99% of the wealth. Right. And that's how they do it, through manipulation tactics, just like I just told you. But there'll still be people, no, no, you know, the market's going to crash. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the worst crash. You know how many times people say that, man? But I guess if people keep saying it, at some point they'll be right. I don't care if it crashes or not, because all I'm going to do if it crashes, guys, <laughs> and this is what I keep telling y'all, all I'm going to do if it crashes is I'm going to double down, triple down, quadruple down and buy more. Because I know one thing about our stock market, I know one thing about our economy, and I know one thing about the 1%. They're not, this is not permanent. Right? Every bear market is followed by a bull market. It, let me say that one more time. For some of y'all who, who, who wasn't listening, every bear market and all bear means is down market, down market, is followed by what? A bull market, which means up market. Give me one instance in the history of the stock market. That hasn't happened. Please, somebody, somebody watching this video, give me one concrete example of where there was never a bull market to follow a bear market. Also, give me one instance in the history of the stock market where we've had a 10-year block of time, consecutive, 
not 10 different years. Oh, it was 1944 and then it was 1965. No, I want a 10 year consecutive block of time where the stock market has traded negative. 10 year block in the history of the stock market. Please, please somebody drop me a comment and tell me when that was. I'm talking about a 10 year consecutive now. Don't come on here with comments about, oh yeah, uh, uh, in 1903, it crashed and, and in 1922, it crashed. No, that's not what I said. I said 10 consecutive. That means in a row for some of y'all that may not quite understand what I'm saying. In a row. Please give me those two pieces of information about our stock market. Also, while I'm at it, tell me why would a guy like Warren Buffett, and I ain't got nothing against Warren Buffett. You know, he's a good guy. I don't know him. He don't know me. He ain't gonna never give me nothing. So I, I, I don't, you know, I don't worship any man. The only worshiping I'm doing is to God. I ain't gonna worship no man, right? I don't care who he is. Cause I, the way I'm wired, I feel like I'm, I'm free too. You free, I'm free. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm free. You're free. We equal. That's the way I look at it. But one thing I want you to think about, because we know we got a lot of warm Buffett worshipers out here or followers or whatever you want to call it. Why does his company, Berkshire Hathaway, why does he personally keep most of his wealth in the stock market? Somebody please tell me that. Now, this guy's a billionaire. I don't know, almost $100 billion, I guess. Also tell me why a guy like Jeff Bezos, right? one of the richest men in the world, why does he keep a lying share of his wealth in the stock market? Not all of it. And Buffett don't keep all his in there either, but they both keep a lying share of their net worth in the stock market. Now, why would they do that? Please somebody tell me why would they do that? Drop me some comments and let me know why would two of the richest men in the world, Americans, since our stock market is fake, it ain't, it's gonna crash, it's gonna do all this other crap. Why is a lying share of their wealth in the stock market? Why? Because it multiplies money, right? They understand that in order to continue to have wealth, that wealth, has to produce some income, right? That wealth has to produce income or you do what? You, over time, you deplete the wealth. If I got wealth, but it's not creating any income, at some point, I'm gonna have to use all of that wealth, right? It, 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 I can't, you know, if I got $100,000 at the bank and I call myself, that's my wealth, but the bank is paying me a 2% interest rate, but, but my lifestyle is, is, is 6%, it's not gonna be long before my 100K is depleted because my lifestyle costs me more than what I'm earning on the asset. These people know that though. See, the 1% know that. The key is build the assets and then go find income streams for that asset to pay you for the rest of your life without touching your principal. And that's what a lot of these guys do. They'll take the dividends, right? I was watching a, a, a little uh, special that Graham Stephan, one of, one of the YouTube guys that I watch occasionally, he interviewed the guy who started Papa John's. I don't know the guy's name, but y'all know who he is. He started Papa John's. And he did a little interview with this guy, went out to his place where he lived at, big old, big old, big old mansion. Acres and acres of land, just, just laid out real nice, right? And, he, and, and the guy laid it out perfectly. He was like, you know, my kids don't understand what money really is. They'll come to me and say, Dad, give me five million bucks. I want to invest in this tech startup because they have no clue what five million really is. And he said, where I look at five million bucks is I look at it as, shoot, if I'm getting you know, a 5% return on that 5 million bucks. It's like $250,000 a year in dividends and income. He said, that's how I look at my money. I look at what can I, what can my 
assets produce for me income wise. Right. And that's what I'm telling you guys. And I like that about that guy. Now, I don't know the guy and I know he's a controversial guy, but that that thought process. See, he, he didn't think about, OK, you know, five million. No, he said potentially with that five million bucks, if I'm getting a, you know, five percent rate of return. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in lost income. If your little project don't go right and it blows up in your face, that's five million gone. But more importantly, it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in in, in, in in interest or dividends that's gone. And that's how I live my life. I don't live my life on the millions. I live my life on the dividends created by the millions. That's how you leave generational wealth. That's how people can pass down wealth to generations because they never touch the principal, guys. They live on the interest or the dividends, right? That the, the asset produces. That's how you create generational wealth. I never touch the principal. The principal always gets passed down to the next generation. And then guess what? The next generation only lives off the interest. They don't touch the principal. And then they pass it down again. That's generational wealth. Not, oh, uh, I left my family a million dollars. That's generational wealth. No, it ain't. It ain't generational wealth unless the million dollars continues to pass down. That's generational wealth. It can't be generational wealth if someone gives you a million and you go spend it. Now you got no income source. Now you got no million. You just broke. So what I'm telling you guys is get your head screwed on right. Get your process right. Start thinking about what's happening, what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you guys, it's going to happen so fast and you're not going to even know it. Because most of us are too busy worrying about crap that ain't got nothing to do with building wealth. We more worried about uh, what somebody doing on social media, what Cardi B doing, what she, who she, be? We, we were, we, we too caught up in that. Somebody else's life. We'd rather sit around and, 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 and like and send goofy emojis and stuff. Stupid stuff like that to people who are already rich. But we want to spend all our time all day telling them they're rich and oh, how much we like them instead of us going out and getting rich. I don't care about what them people are doing. All I care about is how do I make my way to my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so I can control 100% of my time and control my financial destiny. That's all I care about. I don't care about that other crap. And you shouldn't either. Cardi B uh, ain't going to send you nothing. And I ain't knocking Cardi B. She, I'm sure she's a great entertainer, a great person. I'm just telling you the truth. She ain't gonna send you a dime. Right? Support her all you want, but she ain't gonna send you a dime. She don't care nothing about your financial freedom. She don't care nothing about you working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Nothing about it. None of these other entertainers do either. None of these athletes do either. Nobody cares. Right? People don't care. They care about them and what they're going through. So you better start refocusing all your energy off other people and focus it back on you and figure out how do you get your part of gold at the end of the rainbow? How do you get your freedom? Or you're going to work for somebody for the rest of your life. Right? Who wants that? Nobody. So listen to me. Right? Listen to me. Again, just my opinion, but I'm going to give it to you anyway because it's my YouTube channel. Giving you one more time and then I'm signing out of here. Money supply. Right now, the money supply is off because interest rates are up. That's how the Fed controls, right? That's how they control the money supply. When they increase or decrease short-term interest rates, they control the money supply. Right now, it's off because interest rates are up. Soon, and very soon, they're going to turn the money supply back on. All they're going to do, see, and, and if you ain't paying attention, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to be too worried about watching uh, some reality TV uh, show and, and going to miss it, right? Most of us going to miss it because we're going to be doing something else to make somebody else wealthy, supporting somebody else to the supporting ourselves, right? But for those of you who want to know, just be watching out. When that money supply starts to be turned back on, it's not going to be a gush. It's going to be slow. It's going to start like a trickle. The Fed going to say, well, okay. We're getting ready to reduce short-term interest rates by 25 basis points. Boom. That's your key. You know right now, when they say that, when they do that, money supply is starting to get ready to be turned back on. 
And that's when the stock market, in my opinion, over time, will turn back into, it will go from this bear market we're in and it will turn back into a bull market. So be patient, be ready, start buying assets today. Click on that link that I got down in the description box, open up that Weeble brokerage account, put you some money in it, send me an e a DM actually on Instagram at richardfain 28 let me know you've opened it and funded it. I'ma send you a tutorial video, so no excuses about, oh, I don't know how to use it. Oh, it looks intimidating. No, none of that. Cause I'ma give you the step by step, the down and dirty, the quick and easy way to use that app to buy one thing. And that's the S&P 500 ETF VOO from Vanguard. That's where you start. And then once you get comfortable with that, you got your, you got your, your consistency good, your, your, your discipline's good, your patience good. And then if you want to veer off into another ETF, then you can think about Vanguard, Information Technology VGT, which is a tech ETF. Those two right there, boy, are heavy hitters. They have made me a lot of money over the last couple of years. I'm not saying they'll make you a lot of money, but I'm telling you, history says they will. Not me, history. Just go look at the history. And then think about a couple individual stocks. Tesla, Apple, Meta, NVIDIA, all tech, all tech big boys, blue chip. But if you do want to do a little bit of individual stocks, that's where I would hang my hat. I would do an 80-20 split. 80% 80 of my money would go into ETFs that track the S&P 500 or track a sector. And then 20% of my money, if I do want to add some individual stocks, then I take 20% of my money and buy only big boy blue chip companies in the tech space. That's what I would do. I'm not saying you got to do that. I'm telling you that's what I would do. That's what I do do. I, I, I mean, that's what I do do. So that's it, man. I've given you what my opinion is on what's going to be happening here. And my opinion is the Fed wants us to be rich. Now, they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to send you a letter. Okay, uh, uh, Federal Reserve, send you a check. No, for, for a million dollars. No. But they're giving us clear signs that they control the money supply. And who controls the money supply can help us be rich if we know how to look out for certain things when it comes to the money supply. Right now, the money supply is off. That's why rates are high, right? That's why the stock market is down. But it will not be that way for long. So, so hold on, guys. It's coming. And your windfall is coming. But hopefully, you're invested. Hopefully you've taken a part of your earnings and you are investing them to multiply them. I've already told you no one's going to give you anything in this life. Nobody. No one's going to give you anything. Stop living your life through other people. Take control of your life today. And you do that by taking action, taking your hard earned money and figuring out a way to multiply. I've given you one way to multiply it through the stock market. You don't have to take that option, but that's one way you can. That's one of the easiest ways, but it does require you to think long-term. Doesn't happen overnight for most of us. You gotta think long-term. You gotta think three, five, seven, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And if you have that type of thought pattern, stock market is a great place to multiply money, man. Like I said, only way you can do that is you gotta have a brokerage app. Weeble link down in the description box. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. Get up to 12 free stocks for just trying out the brokerage app. I'm gonna send you a free tutorial video to show you how to use the app to buy ETFs and individual stocks. All you gotta do is hit me up on Instagram at richardfain28. Let me know you've opened the account. Let me know you funded it. I'm going to send you that people tutorial video. No strings attached. You ain't got to follow me and, and, and give me 25 likes. You ain't got to do all that crap. You don't need to follow me. 
I, I'm good. I'm free. I'm in the dream house. I'm free. Can't worry about no money. I'm free. I know how to make money. I know how to multiply money. So I, I, I appreciate the likes. I appreciate a follow, but I don't need that. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm trying to give you a vehicle to build wealth. I ain't trying to sell you nothing, guys. You notice on my channel, you, you don't get no big sales pitch. I don't be trying to sell you courses and seminars and webinars. And, and again, I ain't knocking that, but like I said, I already, I'm already free. So, you know, if I'm trying to get free, yeah, I might have to do all that stuff. But when you're already free, when you already spent 25 years building wealth, right, and you just started a YouTube channel three years ago to, to, to help people, I don't, need to, I, don't need to, I don't need to get rich off of your back. I have already got rich off of my own back. I'm just here because I'm passionate about doing this. Why else would I be sitting here on a Monday morning doing a live stream when I don't have to. I do it because I, I'm passionate about helping people. I've gotten to my freedom. I want to help other people get their freedom. Now, I'm a smart businessman, and I understand how YouTube works. I'm going to make a boatload of money on YouTube because I'm just a smart businessman. Right? I'm going to make a boatload of money off of YouTube because I'm a smart businessman. Right? I understand how this thing works in this country. I don't hide behind excuses. I don't need no, you know, oh, let me give you the, no, no, I already know how it works. I'm going to go out and get me a thousand bucks and I'll take that thousand bucks and over the next 10 years, I'll multiply it and turn it into something and turn it into freedom. That's what I talk about on this channel. So when I do that, just, just because I want to help people, like I said, I make money and I make a lot of it, but it's not because I'm trying to trick you into something. Oh, Oh, you know, just buy this, buy that. It's perfect. Is it? No. Y'all know how I roll on this channel. I tell y'all all the time. It's going to take a lot of, 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 of work, man, to get the freedom. It's going to take a lot of work. Y'all know I say that. Y'all know I tell y'all 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It's going to take you to get the freedom. That depends on you, though. But I'm not sitting here telling you going to get rich overnight. Y'all know that. I don't roll like that. I don't roll like that. Yeah, I might have some little catchy titles to my videos because y'all know how YouTube works. Right? I can have the best information in the world, but if nobody don't click on that video, it means nothing. So sometimes you gotta get creative with the title so that you can get some attention, and then YouTube, only way YouTube sends you out to people that don't know nothing about you is, is you gotta get some attention. They gotta see, the algorithm has to see that you're getting attention, and then the algorithm throws you out to more people. But if ain't nobody clicking on your videos, I don't care how good they are, you get no attention, YouTube gonna let you sit right there with no views. I know that. See, I know how that works. So guess what I do? I do what I need to do within the scope of my channel to get people to think about their growth, think about their wealth, think about multiplying their money. And the Weeble thing, I use Weeble every day, guys, because I know I get accused of, oh, why are you, uh, why are you always talking about Weeble? Oh, I, get, I bet you make money off Weeble. Of course I make money off Weeble. I'm a businessman. But I use the Weeble app every day to transact business. Why wouldn't I? What, 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 if a company came to me and said, hey, Richard, we like your channel. We like your audience. Try out this product. If you like it and you use it, would you mind sharing it with your audience? Well, why wouldn't I do that, guys? I mean, why would I turn that down? That's not hurting you. That's not costing you a penny. Not one dime. I'm not saying sign up for Weeble and then send me $100 and, 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 and let me activate you. No. It's free. It's a brokerage app. Just like Robinhood is a brokerage app. Just like Vanguard has a brokerage app. Just like Merrill Lynch has a brokerage app. But see, those companies don't have to come to a guy like me or anybody else because they're already big. They spend all their money marketing on mainstream TV, mainstream radio. Little companies like Weeble and Robinhood and, 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 and all them little bitty self-directed apps, they don't have that type of budget. So they go find creators like me with good sized audiences, right, with some integrity. And they say, well, try out our product. If you like it, share it. We'll compensate you. And ain't nothing wrong with that. It's the American way. If, most, if, if more of you would do that, you'd be better off. I keep telling you. There are a million ways out here, man, to make money. 
for some reason, we just, we just want to stick with one or two ways when there are a million more. Figure it out. Make more money. Get yourself to freedom. Own 100% of your time. Own 100% of your financial destiny. Stop letting somebody else control the things you do financially with your life. Whoever you work for, whoever paying you, controls you from a financial standpoint. Well, all right, guys, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I hope you guys got something out of this. Remember that money supply is going to get ready to be turned back on here real soon. Get yourself in position, right? Get yourself in position so that you can capitalize on that. I got a company called RF Financial Consulting. So if any of you guys want a one-on-one -on -one session with me, of course, you're going to have to pay for it. It ain't free. This ain't a nonprofit. It's for profit. So if you don't want to pay for one-on-one -on -one time with me, don't email me, right? Don't email me. That's all. It, it, I, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I don't do outbound uh, uh, mailers and stuff like that for RF Financial Consulting because I stay busy in that company. Stay busy. I want to control that because it's a one-hour session that I want to do with people who are serious. So the fee you got to pay is serious. You got skin in the game, right? You charge 25 bucks. Ain't nobody got skin in the game. They may show up for the call. They may not show up for the call. But when you got a sizable amount of money, you got skin in the game. You're going to show up. And we're going to get you a plan, and you're going to get yourself to a point where hopefully you'll follow that plan and build you some wealth. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Share the video. Smash that like button. If you're tapping into this thing late, guys, please, before you get out of here, it's quite a few of y'all in this live right now. Before you get out of here, please, please do me a favor. Hit the like button. It helps the channel and it helps me tremendously. We get YouTube to spread this message out to more people when you hit that like button. So please hit that like button a hundred times and I would appreciate it. Also share the video. There may be somebody in your sphere of people, in your network that may want to hear this. Don't make that decision for them. Let them make the decision. Just send them the video. Have them watch it. Let them make the decision if it's worth them watching or not. You don't make it for them, right? Let's, let's pay this thing forward. Let's try to help as many people as we can get to their financial freedom, right? Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next live or the next video. Peace.